People of God, awake. The day is coming soon when you shall see God face to face. Remember the ways and works of God. God calls you out of darkness to walk in the light of his coming. You are God's children. Lord, make us one as we walk with Christ today and forever. Amen. As we prepare now to meet God in word and sacrament, we bring before him those things we have got wrong and ask for his forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you from your sins, open your eyes to God's truth, strengthen you to do God's will, and give you the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Not just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus said to his disciples, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds, with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels, and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth, and to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender, and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn. Or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. And a lot more waiting. 
with a lot of uncertainty and a bit of fear, to be honest. And I thought those feelings back in February would be rare this year. But here we are in a year where we have experienced uncertainty and some fear in a way that we have never before. Waiting for the end of lockdown, the end of suffering, the end of loss of life due to this pandemic. Waiting for numbers to drop and some kind of normality to glimmer on the horizon and waiting for something to hope in. We arrive this week in the glorious season of Advent, a time of waiting and keeping our focus on all that is promised and all that is hoped for. Waiting for a king who is foretold by the wise prophets from years before and suddenly over these days leading to Christmas, that electric, almost tangible sense of anticipation of the coming of Jesus is present amongst us again. We wait for something that is promised, someone who is promised, by those who knew God was faithful and who knew God's words were full of truth and purpose. We wait for someone who will change our world, our circumstances and our lives forever, for everyone. The Gospel reading today is commonly used to gauge the second coming of Jesus and some people have been known to try and use this passage to make some kind of calculation of when that will be. But to be honest I'm not sure that this is the purpose of this piece of scripture, especially as it directly says that no one knows the day or the hour. I think this passage has a different message, one that says wait, be ready, and know that in all things God is in control. And hold on to that as we wait for the coming of the King, both born in a stable and coming in glory. This passage reminds us that no matter what changes around us, this is all certain, promised, something to be confident in, and that we need to be proactively expectant and find reason to hope. It takes a bit more courage to be expectant this year. We might have had some great things lined up for this year and our sense of expectancy was mainly filled with excitement and opportunity, but instead it's shaped out to be very different. It has been hard to see what might be ahead and in some ways hard to even be expectant, not quite knowing what will happen next. It's reasonable that we feel this way when we just aren't sure about the things we might have been sure about this time last year. But one thing we do know for sure is that God is still the same. He is still faithful and still has a plan and a purpose for our lives. His love, mercy and grace for us is still unshakable. So as we wait over these weeks ahead, may we let these truths encircle us tightly and reassure us as we wait for Jesus through this time of Advent. I'm sure you agree it's been so good to hear news even this week on the vaccines which will change life for us next year and we do give thanks to God for those who have worked so hard on this. This gives us some hope doesn't it? And so it should. Hope can often be something that we feel cautious about and allowing ourselves to hope can often feel a bit risky. But there is hope here for leaving this difficult year and looking ahead to a brighter 2021. And there is hope here in this Advent journey too. Hope that tells us that this person of Jesus is on his way. Bringer of peace, counsel, love and redemption. And this is unquestionably certain. This is hope seen in a crib, on a cross and in an empty tomb. Hope that is solid foundation, a direction of travel and a reason to keep going. So as we wait over these weeks ahead, may we let these truths bring comfort and certainty to our lives and encompass our fears as we wait for Jesus through this time of Advent. Our own experiences of waiting, whether that's in an airport, at a bus stop, in a queue, or in fact, in an actual waiting room, may remind us of tiredness and impatience, and some uncertainty. But let's step into this time of Advent knowing what we know, 
and 100% certain of it, that at the end of this journey we will come to the stable and look at the manger and into the face of King Jesus, knowing that he will change everything for us. And by doing that, allow it to renew and restore our hope and expectancy, knowing that in the waiting God reveals to us again his extravagant love and purpose for us all. And let's find ways that we can bring that hope to others amidst the decorating of our trees and the preparations for Christmas. Take time to show and talk about hopefulness that is rooted in this transformational Christmas story that never changes. So that others might take courage and hope for themselves and be expectant in a God that never changes. Amen. So as we continue to place our trust in the God who is always faithful to us and to hope in the promises he gives us, we affirm our faith together in the words of the Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for your world. We pray for all people throughout the world affected by coronavirus. We pray for all those working to find a vaccine. I pray for an end to this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church. We pray in thanksgiving for those who lead our churches and ask that you would continue to guide, inspire and strengthen them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our friends and family. We ask that you would keep those we love safe during these difficult times. We pray that those who haven't been able to be together may soon be reunited. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are poorly. We pray for all those who are on our parish slip list and for those who take, who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have lost loved ones and for all who are grieving. We pray that you would comfort them in the midst of their sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves. We ask that you would increase in us a sense of expectation and anticipation and would help us to have a holy advent as we wait for the coming of Jesus, our Saviour and our friend. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share in his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world, to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, to proclaim your glory forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heart. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ. Amen. And you have 
have united in us with Christ and one another. Now send us out in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the light and life of Christ our Saviour. Amen. So yeah, thank you for joining us this morning for our service. Um, church will be open this coming Wednesday as usual for private prayer between 12 and 1 o'clock. And we are delighted that we will be back together in this building worshipping together next Sunday at our services at 8 o'clock and 10.30. Uh, if you would like to join us, please book in with Susie in the normal way by emailing her. Uh, if you could just state which service you'd like to attend so that we can uh, put you on the right list, that would be brilliant. Uh, we're also uh, running an Advent group through, uh, through Advent, um, and if you're interested in joining that online group, uh, please contact uh, Reverend Carol. Um, her email is on the website and on the newsletter that's sent out. And finally, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to Julia. Uh, for preparing our Advent candles, which we've lit the first one of this week, and we'll continue to light one each week now up till Christmas. So we join now for God's blessing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. As we await our coming Saviour, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.